All right, everyone. You're watching another video tutorial brought to you by GeekyAnimator.com, and today we're going to learn about how to use camera tools in Anime Studio Pro. So, um, in order to show you, I'm going to import a scene for, uh, already made in Anime Studio Pro. So, I'm going to go to the File menu, and I'm going to go to Import. I'm going to go to Scenes, and under the background, I can choose. Um, forest one alright so I'm gonna click on it and here we are with the forest so um, I can you know uh, translate this layer now you can see um, I'm not having this uh, this uh, the complete frame filled with it so I'm gonna go to the, uh, the scale layer I'm gonna enlarge it a bit alright so here we are I'm gonna press enter Oops, alright, I'm gonna switch off this uh, collapse this layer, forest layer that I had imported right now. I don't need to visit any layers inside it. Alright, now first of all, I'm gonna show you the under the camera tools. You can see we have four camera tools, and I'm gonna first of all select this track camera. Now, when you select it, any of the tools that you're using in camera, you are actually you know making changes or you're having the camera in your hand, and now you're making all the changes that you want. So, if I click with the track camera selected, and if I click and drag my mouse, I'm actually moving the camera to the left and the right direction. If I move my mouse to the left, I'm uh, tracking towards the right hand side. So I can see the right hand side scene. All right. And if I drag it to the right, I can see the left hand side scene. So this is a track camera. Now first of all, I'm going to show you, introduce you to all these camera effects. And in the end, we're going to make an animation using these camera tools. Okay. So first of all, let's, uh, you know, introduce you all to the camera effects. Now the next one is the zoom one. Zoom one is simply as the name says. If you click and drag your mouse to the up direction, you are zooming out. And if you bring your mouse downwards, you are zooming in. Alright. So this is the zoom one. And this you see this uh, rectangle or this blue rectangle that you see on the side of the screen, so on this frame. This is actually the camera view. Anything lying inside this rectangle is what you got. It's, it is that thing that uh, I mean anything lying inside this rectangle is the thing that you're gonna see when you render it. This is the camera view. All right. Anything lying within this is the one lying inside the camera. And uh, if you render it, you won't see the any or uh, any object or any shape outside this uh, this rectangle. All right. So if you want something to be shown in the, inside the camera, you have to make sure that it lies inside this rectangle. Cool. So the next one is the rolling camera and the rolling camera is basically the rotation of the camera on its own axis. So if I click and drag, you can see I am rolling the camera or I can say that I am rotating the camera on its own axis. Alright. So you can use this, uh, I mean, uh, this tool when you want to show that a person or something is, uh, you know, uh, falling down with the uh, spinning on its own axis. Like a like an airplane. If the airplane is crashing, you can use this tool to show that the the whole scene is rotating from the if you see it from the uh, view of the airplane. All right. Now I'm gonna press Control plus Z to back make it back to the position where it was. And now I'm gonna select this uh, tilt camera. And what it does, it actually tilts the camera well as the name says. So if I click and drag my mouse to the left, to the right hand side, I can see my camera is tilted towards the left hand side and the left view becomes more expanded and the right one becomes a bit smaller. Uh, you can see the demonstration what I actually mean. You see, if I go to the left hand side and I can, you know, go to any of the side and make my camera tilt. Alright? Now this can help you create, you know, more interesting animations press control plus Z to undo it alright so these were all the four camera effects now we're gonna learn how to do the animation alright now this is the interesting part because you know we're doing all this just to make an interesting animation so I'm gonna go to the timeline and I'm gonna select the zoom camera first okay and I'm gonna click on 24th frame and now I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I'm gonna click my mouse and drag it downwards to zoom in. Fine. Now I have zoomed in. And what I want to do right now is I want to go to the 
uh, if you you know let me show you what has happened right now you can see that inside this this timeline you have this uh, camera zoom of uh, tool showing here and in front of it there is a horizontal line well this horizontal line consists of the frames of the uh, zoom camera so at the 24th I can see a keyframe at 0th frame and a keyframe at the 24th frame so the 0th frame is the one that was in the initial that we had all right and at the 24th frame, if I click on 24th frame, the keyframe is inserted which makes the position of the uh, of our scene like this. So if I drag my mouse from the 0 to the 24th position, I can see my mouse, uh, I'm sorry, I can see my animation, the camera is zooming inside of it. So I can see a smooth animation over here. Alright, similarly we can do it for the pan camera, I'm sorry, the um, track camera. So if I click on 48, and if I choose this one, this uh, track camera, and if I change the position, I mean, make it somewhere like this. All right. Now, when you do that, you are inserting a keyframe because you are changing the state of the scene, and that's why I did this on the 48th frame. So the keyframe is inserted on the 48th position. Now you can see that you have two uh, horizontal lines: one for the zoom camera and another for the uh, camera tracking. See that and we have one uh, uh, keyframe at the 0th position and another at the 48th. So you have individual uh, uh, handling of the keyframes. You can see that they are not linked together. You can you know customize them to the uh, without affecting the other tool. All right. So if I have this camera tracking, I can shift it direction from the 0th frame to the 48th frame. Now if I bring uh, bring my mouse cursor at uh, 0th frame and now if I drag this header you can see that your seat is zooming and side by side it's simultaneously tracking also because I have a tracking keyframe inserted at the 48th frame so if I bring this for this if I this keyframe I can select it by left clicking on it and dragging it to the wherever position I want so I'm gonna bring it to 24 and if I you know drag my mouse this header, red header, I can see the zooming and tracking both happening at the same time. Alright, now I'm gonna bring it back to 48. Now suppose you wanted to first of all zoom in and then start the tracking. So at the time you're zooming in, you don't want the tracking to happen. You want the tracking keyframe to be the same as it was before. So what I can do, I can click on this initial the zeroth frame keyframe and I'm gonna copy it and then click on the 24th frame and I'm gonna paste it on the 24th frame. Now, what I have actually done is from the 0th to the 24th, 24th frame, if I see the zoom to zoom camera tool, it is simply zooming as normally that as we had, you know, already done. But if we see the tracking one, the tracking camera, now the tracking camera is no, the, both the keyframes are the same. That means there is going to be no motion between, no motion for the camera tracking. So if I press my header and I bring my mouse drag my mouse inside this between the 0 to 24 frames you can see only and only uh, zoom camera keyframe is uh, functioning right now only zooming is happening and no camera tracking because the the initial keyframe and the 24th keyframe the both are the same and therefore an i studio pro does nothing for these two keyframes because they both are the same and but if you move after 24 this keyframe at 24 and the 48th one are different so that's why an i studio pro gonna automatically create frames for it and we can see a motion of tracking occurring all right well um that's how it's done and we can again insert more keyframes for the other tool so if i click 72 and i'm gonna choose the roll camera this time and if i roll my oops i'm gonna if i roll my um scene to any direction you can see another horizontal bar has been inserted for the roll camera and you can even change the keyframes for this one so if i want the roll camera to happen after the 48th frame so i can simply select the initial frame which is the zeroth frame i'm going to copy it and i'm going to go to the 48th frame so that my header comes at the 48th frame and now i can click on the paste option to paste the keyframe that i had copied and now if I move my mouse after the uh, what I say um, this rolling happens after the 48th frame.
see that if I delete this keyframe I'm gonna I can select it and simply click on delete delete it now if I move from 0 to the 72th frame then you can 70 second then you can see um, rolling is happening all the rolling is also simultaneously happening with all the other camera um, camera tools keyframes all right so you can you know do whatever you want uh, I mean according to your needs you may change it even the tilt one we can also um, select the 70 second keyframe again and I'm going to select the this tilt one and I can tilt your scene I mean you can create whatever scene you want and now you can see another keyframe has been inserted for the uh, tilt camera or the pan camera whatever you want to say it and all the things are occurring at the same time I can even to fix it you know if you I don't want the same thing to happen like this I can select the keyframe at the zeroth position for the um, tilt camera copy it and simply click on the 48th frame and click on paste and now the tilting is going to happen only after 48 all right so this is how we use the uh, camera tools uh, of course these camera tools are very important if you want to make animation you have your whole scene set and you want that camera to track all the motions or wherever your character is moving or whatever motion is happening camera tool I mean it really helps a lot in creating interest and um, you know it brings the viewer more close to the scene makes him feel like as if he himself is experiencing it so these were the camera tools I hope you learned something and you're gonna try something yourself out <laughs> you can create your own scenes and try it for yourself how these camera tools work so thanks for watching and you can have some more tutorials so log on to geekanimator.com if you want to know about more tutorials the basics and the advanced both and uh, well thanks for watching